telling me how safe River Bridge Estates was. Oh, we have no problems here. The cops don't come in here. We don't have any problems here. The second night up there, the girl next door got shot. <laughs>
I said, I'm going in here. I'm three teeny woman. Are you kidding me? That's a spare. <laughs> my eyes kind of just a little bit. She would want on and had a tassel on the nub. A mind and mind. You ain't saying long, then you get up to where let's see. Boogie trout, then you got uh, where the old law saint used to be. There's a graveyard behind. You know that old people got killed in there. I got a buddy that got killed in there here with a knack and all. He killed in the graveyard dead. Uncle Morris. What happened to Uncle Morris? I used to go in there. It burned. I used to love them poor chocolate and eggs and biscuits. Now it's a casino. They all got a lot of casinos shut down, but they're still here. They took the monkey out in front of that one. Remember the monkey? I guess that's supposed to give you the urge to gamble when you see an ape on the side of the <laughs> Then you go away to Sleepy Hollow. That's where the trailer places start. I saw it. So I live in a trailer. Trailer living ain't all that bad. You can get something you buy a house. Over that trailer park, it said, you too can now own your own dream home. Keyboard here, y'all, dream home. I live in a trailer. When I dream, I ask you to enhance and heal. <laughs> I dream home, don't have to be underpinned, cool seal. I have to put no tires on the top to keep the top from popping. You don't have to have a tire gauge to level up my dream home. <laughs> My dream home got a stripper bar in the basement, Waffle House and the kitchen, crap table in the living room, food tables. That would be my dream home. What do you saw? Do you dream? Wet dreams. <laughs> oh, but it got wet on the other night when it was raining and falling. I saw a bird pull a one by the ground had a little scuba outfit. <laughs> You're going to be a lot of fun, so I need two or three of these stuff yet. <laughs> Funniest place in the world to get comedy and make yourself feel a little bit better about the way you look, go to Walmart 2 o'clock in the morning. If you can't come out there feeling a little bit better about yourself, you ain't paying attention. I met a girl in there one night. I was single. She started talking to me. I was over there buying some shotgun shit. She got to talking to me. She looked like Halle Berry. Next morning, she looked like Chuck Berry. <laughs> Toward the walk out, I was coming to a show in Atlanta, and I forgot to get my son, my grandson, a gift. Now, a long time ago, we used to mess it up. Every day at 9 o'clock, go to a drugstore, buy a little toy. I went to stop at the wall. I walked up to the woman in the front, Sheila. You know, she's the number one of them. Got one eye looking off in this direction. You want a buggy? You talking to me, man? You looking up here? You talking to me? I said, y'all love them 24 hours, 24 hours. She said, yeah, man, we love them. That's handy. I said, ma'am, have you got have you got one of them super soft water guns? The one they pump up while you're at work and shoot the damn retina right out of your eye? <laughs> shoot through a piece of plywood. Remember the little hippie water gun she had? <coughs> she said, I think we got one back in the toy department. I'll go with you. So I'm following. I got to make it some, you know, talk to people. That's how you get comedy. I said, Sheila, are these the kind that shoot real far? She said, no, they shoot you walk. <laughs> I don't think they make it for kids to keep going to the I'm walking to get out of there. Their goal is to keep you in there and buy something you didn't know you want. I got up one night went to some Q tips, come back with a riding on over, a bad hidden set, and an egg blue cool. Forgot the Q tip. 
Dalton Fumble Big Salad Dressing Display, y'all. This when it first come out. It's in a package. Put your water and vinegar in there. Shake it up. Bathroom dream come true. I'm looking at it. Sheila wants it. She's stalking me now. She said, well, that's great. Isn't it salad dressing in a powder in the package? I said, yes, ma'am, you got any seizures? She said, well, you don't need no seizures. Just tear it up with your mouth. <laughs> Can't get out of there though. I gotta throw in there one more time. Anybody copy fish? You throw in there one more time, don't you, sir, before you crank the boat. Just to make sure they won't hang on that lamp. I said, Sheila, you ever use this product? She said, Oh, every night when oil comes home from the railroad, I fix up my mouth a double wide salad. I said, What's a double wide salad? She said, That's for people who can't afford the house that. <laughs> They don't get no easier out of it. I this is a true story to you. You have to make that stuff in work, okay? I think it's why y'all, y'all ain't even done no time here, y'all. Somebody said, why are you moving back to work? I said, for the time to I bought my grandbabies coming up. It was like the 4th of July. I wanted to throw horseshoes. So I went in there and bought a box of horseshoes with two stakes and four horseshoes. I laid them on the counter and said, What kind of horse do you have? I said, I don't have a horse. Well, why are you buying horseshoes? I said, They're to throw. She said, No, the horse throws them. You don't throw them. I said, What's that stake in there for? She said, To tie the horse up.
it to a hospital. Don't take me to Waffle House. That's how this thing got messed up. So they took me to the General Charity National Hospital that y'all don't go to. Y'all to warn people that come into town. That ain't a hospital. It's a great place for a hospital. It's got a black pole out from it. The X next door. You see doctors coming and going. But I think there's something I'm worth saying. Not the mirrors. So I finally got him on the white road, going down the airport road and trying to make it 78. He's going 100 miles an hour. I'm thinking these cats are good. They're going to get me to a hospital quick. So he's down there trying to jack. He goes to layup, pulls in there. I got out. All I remember is passing out on the gurney. I woke up with a blinding light in my face. I thought I was in heaven. I should have known better. I thought I was in heaven. A doctor on this side of the bed, a doctor on that side of the bed. They were running a wire up in my leg to look in my heart. In Walker County. That's scary, y'all. I think it was a man Tim off the old old one. He had a lame dog. <laughs> so help me. This surgeon said, God, that ain't had no blood in it in a long time. Are you sure you're running that up? <laughs> I ain't paying for it. The other surgeon said, Oh, that's been stopped up. 30 years. That been stopped up 70%. Number four was stopped up 60%. One turned to the other and said, we need to get this man to a hospital. <laughs> so now I'm back outside. I got my IV pole standing outside. They know you're not going to stay in there long. That's the trouble. They sit at Jack's now talking. They don't seem to come out. He pulled up and said, where you want to go down, funny man? I said, take me to Montclair. I always heard that's a good hospital, did he? Well, I'll take him and go to Montclair. Take me to Montclair. He got that old 78 job and he had the floorboard. He's going 150 miles an hour right in front of the booby trap. <laughs> All of a sudden, I thought I had it made pretty good. I got the feeling just a little bit better. He gave me a shot or something. I'll cut it one by anchor. <laughs> no, I should have took one, keep him blowing off the gurney. <laughs> well, you try with me to every show I go to. I'll pay your way. You can sell shirts and I'll put them on you. This man here, his face is red and he's like, look like the first time in many years. <laughs> Every time I'm here, you get in free. Are you dollars or two dollars? Somebody young. I like a man who carries kids out. You did a honeymoon, you don't want to make love to her or put it in front of the TV with a bowl of cereal. They're done with me. They like, they know 
I ain't got no money, no insurance. They just let me out like I was getting out of a cab. <laughs> they put me on bar and blow me in there. I had an IV pole, I walked in there. Are you sure you go in a hospital? You gotta face that woman in that glass booth with that hole. You know what that hole's for? To keep you from slapping her. <laughs> Sir, stop, sir, don't go no further. Sir, what kind of insurance you got? I said, Blue Cross. <laughs> Full coverage. <laughs> you know how long it takes him to find out you ain't got Blue Cross? <laughs> One day and a half. <laughs> After a year, they bought me a Pepsi can with a top cut out. <laughs> After some crunches, they sent me two pieces of wood and four wing nuts. I had to carve my own crutches, y'all. <laughs> For laxity, they sat me on the commode and showed me my bill. I'll clean me out for one thirty thousand dollars. So I got over that. That was in 2002. And y'all, I was up in about three days. They give you a tube and it's got a, a ping pong ball with it. If you can hold that ping pong ball up there for 10 seconds, it, that looks easy, but when you've had your lungs deflated, it ain't easy. But I blow it on that thing. I made it go to the top. <laughs> I made it go to the top. And he said, you can hold it up for 10 seconds and walk down yonder, down that hall, and back up and let you go home. Well, I went down there with my gown, tail, my butt hanging out, and I was flying. And I blowed that thing up, he said, you can go home. I did a show on the way home at the bull. On the way home, still had the sucker cups on. Still had the, still had the uh, scrubs on. The comedian that picked me up and take me home, I wasn't married, take me home. He said, if you're crazy, I said, it's for charity. It's for what I want to make the it's when I do that, I said, well, I'll just pull up to, to, to the steps, and I'll walk in there and do it, and I'll walk back out. I walked in there, there was nobody in there. A thousand cars, but nobody in there. I said, well, where's the show? She said, upstairs. About 57 steps, straight upstairs. So it took me about 10 minutes to get up there. And the guy said, look, do five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever you can do. Don't put yourself in no line. I did 55 minutes right out of the hospital. It worked out good. Boss Hart was there. Uh, what's the sheriff's name? Oscar. Oscar. Coach. Oscar. Yeah, and the two guys. Over there, Bo, Bo and Luke. And they had to call. I said anything. You can touch me out to the show. <laughs> Years. Who's got kids? Who's got the precious kid? <coughs> Proud of it too, ain't you? <laughs> yeah, I got it. And you want one on my got one. <laughs> you raise one for me. They're just precious on to they're so precious. I got a friend named Maggie Lee who works for Protected Line, and I saw her in the golf tournament. She got two beautiful little girls, very small, very intelligent. How's your kids, man? They're just precious. That pisses me off. You know why? We want them precious for me, sir. You ain't never been precious in your whole life. We want precious. We were just around. How many times somebody come over and ask you, Daddy, where's the kids? Hell, I'll come over there and show them.
Two foot of sawdust, case it was, to fall off, it would have put your little precious tail on. <laughs> what do we have, y'all? Not a darn thing. <laughs> Monkey ball. 60 feet and a half. Slicking goose mess on the moldy floor. Couldn't hold on to it on a good day. With a concrete base, y'all. Concrete. One of those sawdust. Great toys. My grandbaby's got a box. You pull a string, arrow goes around to a cow. Cow. We didn't have that. We had a cow in the backyard. That's a damn cow. <laughs> Remember this one? Hell, he won't do it but one time. <laughs> the 
old in the deep part. He won't drown no more. <laughs> but what is he making me mad right now? Grandparents in the house? That's the greatest kid in the world. That's your reward for not killing your own kid. <laughs> Should have had them first. <laughs> Bring him over to the house. Got a whole pickup truck full of stuff. Got to put it together. Mama had a little sack, didn't she? With a Kleenex and there with lipstick all over it. Little sack. Now they got a pickup truck full of stuff. I just shoot it like this. I'm going to play with her. I can throw a rope over a tree limb and put a tire on it. Oh, she'll hang herself. <laughs> a child and a rope, are you kidding me? They got to the door, it's going to leave for a couple of days, going down to the farm to the beach. And he said, she said, if you run into any problems, there's a book in there you can read. I didn't know they had a book. My mama hit me with a book one time. Horrible, but I'm saying, hey, I couldn't wait for him to leave. And wait for my wife to go, man, I'm going to read this magic book on how to raise kids. And the funny thing about it, the man that wrote it never had a child. <laughs> never had one. That don't make any sense. I got that book out. I found what I was looking for on the first page. You should not physically whip or abuse a child that will scar them for life. They will never forget it. That's the reason you get eyes with them. Ain't not to forget it. <laughs> you touch a hot eye on the stove, you come back 40 years later and go, that damn thing's hot right like there. That's hot and burn you. You raise them, educated, white teeth, beautiful child, smart, intelligent, but all of a sudden you don't know nothing about life. Mine dropped me off the other day and said, Daddy, don't let him get in the road. Let me take your ass in the road. Get him in the road. You don't look like you're in my road. It's the same road you grew up in. You never got in the road. Came in the house, y'all. Pointed his electrical out and she said, Daddy, I'm not going to let him stay again until you get some covers on your electric light. He'll lick that and electric in his I said, hell, he won't do it one time. <laughs> I want to bring something back that I think would sure be good for everybody. I think it would take care of a lot of problems we have now with our kids. Bring back the good old fashioned ass whooping. <laughs> I ain't talking about slapping on the leg or switching or nagging them. I'm talking you there's an ass whooping. An ass is a donkey. You whoop him like a donkey. I was in Kmart at Hoover. True story. Came in. I had one of the plastic ball bags and they were backing up and I was whooping the black ball bag. It wasn't hurting me. They hit each other hard. Big black lady came over and said, Sir, this is not 1956. You can't whip a child in public anymore, especially with a ball bat. I'm calling the law. <laughs> Who are you calling, ma'am? I'm calling the Hoover cops, and they're going to arrest you for molesting your kid. I said, I'm going to jail. I'm like, well, we'll kill the guy <laughs> Try to smile tonight. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You listen too much of my CD. It ain't funny to you, boy. I'd be ashamed. If you was up here, I'd be laughing at you. Pay attention. I won't take you to midnight special if you don't. Have y'all been in that? You talk about a meat house, and they can buy the most outlandish. Clothes. A woman 250 pounds with a mini dress on a badly covered in Gucci box. I'm talking to you. It was short. I said, you got on what I call a jet dress. She said, what's a jet dress? I said, you bend over and see you talk people.
that be divorced right here before this night's over. Where y'all from?
she grabbed him by the smile and pulled him down and said, I've been here to see the police, you don't know what my damn name is. <laughs>
six years since I did comedy, but I ain't too bad how to do it, baby. I had cancer six years ago. Prostate cancer. I had moved back to one hand so I could be close to the hospital. I couldn't drive, so my sister would pick me up. Sixty-five treatments in a row. Tough.
and if you was drunk or something. I don't know. Remember I said Blake three of them up here? Remember that? Yeah. You didn't remember until the time you got to the car. Just bring three of them. Three of them. T-shirts, baby. T-shirts. I take all that back about what I said about him. Bring me three T-shirts in each color, please.
was in Augusta, Georgia, in the opening act. I was in the middle. She was no, she's in the middle. I was headlining. He's got a basketball out there to go to the Holiday Inn. She walked over there with just regular shoes on. She said, we'll play to 11 for $100. He said, yeah, I'll play. Yeah, I'll play high school. She said, I don't tell you. He should have asked her some more questions. <laughs> she beat his 11 nothing, took $100. Because let's go to the back, let's go to the outback. They got us seven to go to the outback. Let's go to the Let's go to the outback. That guy was telling me more. I think she's done this before. <laughs> he glided her to the basket. She hit a jumper, nothing but net, driven it to her leg, or behind her head, spinning on her finger. She's a wonderful comedy girl and a wonderful person. And she's going to be coming here. So you check it out. And for me, do me a favor. I talked to her today. And I said, I'm going to have you a good crowd there. And you'll enjoy the heck out of it. Y'all know Mickey Dean, I really enjoy being here. Thank you so much. God bless you. Have a great time.